78, Robert Michael Marquis or Marquez? Marquez. Marquez. Good afternoon. My name is Robert Michael of the House Marquez. I'm here to represent the Chair of St. Peter. We are here to represent the people, to present the people of the City of Detroit. We are the primary trustees of the global estate, superior to the Roman Curia. We hereby establish the Superior Court on the land as open and in session with living witnesses as my record. And as such, we will read the notice of eligibility objection. My right to free speech is infinite, and no one can take that from me but God. So it will not be prohibited, and I promise I won't take much of your time. The Chair of St. Peter is the principal and primary trustee of the Global Estate Trust, under whose jurisdiction the Roman Curia operates. The Chair of St. Peter is both the ecclesiastic as well as the organic trustee of the Global Estate Trust with a fiduciary duty to the divine living beneficiaries. The City of Detroit, upper and lower case, the City of Detroit, Detroit all uppercase, the United States Bankruptcy Court, and the United States Trustees, all uppercase, are legal fiction alien trustees who operate under the jurisdiction of the Roman Curia. The people of the city of Detroit, the true creditors in the matter at hand, have requested the chair of St. Peter intervene on their behalf to officially object to the proceedings and to compel the return of the property to the principal for administration in original jurisdiction. The creditors in the bankruptcy, the city of Detroit, officially object to the eligibility of the city of Detroit as a debtor for the following. The 300-year-old city of Detroit is financially solvent, as the inhabitants thereof have the ability to pay via set-off all obligations when properly presented with a bill as all accounts are prepaid. The legal fiction, the city of Detroit, has failed to tender a valid bill containing a sum certain, thereby preventing satisfaction and accord to facilitate the continued economic slavery of the people of the city of Detroit. The bankruptcy petition is intentionally confusing, misleading, and failing to stipulate the specific meanings of the words used in the petition while employing multiple and diabolically opposed meanings to the words in the body of the document identifying the inhabitants as creditors and then debtors with a need to be protected from themselves in bankruptcy. Number three, it is... It is the less than 80-year-old legal fiction, the city of Detroit, a device which has been intentionally mismanaged by politicians, bureaucrats, and consultants, whose wordsmithing and sleight of hand that has to cast the inhabitants into economic slavery, which is intentionally insolvent. The city of Detroit is a device created by the trustees and administration guardians operating under the jurisdiction of the Roman Curia, who have been tricked, who have who having tricked the people into pledging their property as collateral, which has fraudulently converted the true creditors into debtors, reducing the creditors to the status of insolvent paupers having no rights. The city of Detroit is a legal fiction alien who has hypothecated the credit of the people of the city of Detroit and holds the private matching funds who refuses to execute the set off of debt for the settlement and closure of the accounts to return the city of Detroit, lowercase, and the city of Detroit, uppercase, to solvency. These are two different entities. It has been established, in fact, that the city of Detroit is a legal fiction, all uppercase, a legal fiction alien whose ownership and or control over the property and credit of the people is adversely affecting the global state trust as well as the living beneficiaries thereof. The people, the true creditors, and the principal, in reference to the bankruptcy of the city of Detroit, hereby set forth the remedy to wit. The immediate set-off of the debt for settlement and closure of the accounts, liquidation of the legal fiction, the city of Detroit, and the immediate return of the property via Eshiot to the principal for administration in original jurisdiction. We have proposed a Detroit recovery plan to implement this. As Sir, your time is up. I will give you another moment or so. It's going to be about three, but I will, I will wrap up as soon as possible. As we look around us, we can see that managing the economic emergency since 1933 has not turned out so well for the people. The emergency management by the present civil administration, funded by the good faith and credit of the people, has dramatically tarnished the credit and reputation of the people as it has converted the creditors, we the people, into debtors and reduced us in status to that of insolvent paupers having no rights. 
Managing the emergency has given rise to a perpetual emergency with increasingly more dire consequences, casting us all into insolvency. Emergency management by the present civil administration has resulted in the creditors, we the people, being reduced to debtors and enemies of the state under the Trading with the Enemy Act under which the present civil administration has waged war against the people, the creditors, for decades. They have waged economic war against the people as well as a war against crime, war against drug, war against hunger and homelessness, and a war against terrorism which has resulted in dramatically increased crime, illicit, increased illicit drug abuse, increased hunger and homelessness, and increased terrorism and war. Detroit is a clear example establishing the evidence that management of the economic emergency delivers to us an even greater emergency with which to manage all at the expense of the people, the true creditors. Management by the present civil administration has turned Detroit into what looks like a war zone destroying our neighborhoods, our families, our family values, and our sense of community. Emergency Please wrap up, sir. The present 14th Amendment legal fiction corporate, excuse me, thank you. The present 14th Amendment legal fiction corporate, the city of Detroit shall immediately settle all accounts, zero the debt via set off, and make whole all the creditors, making the return of the property to the principals and distribute the mezzanine funds to the living beneficiaries. The city of Detroit shall immediately cease the auction and or sale of property and assets of the people as well as all lotteries and immediately convey the property to the new administration. An interim mayor and city council shall be appointed and empowered under the Charter of 1857 to make the transition back to solvency. The interim government shall be provided the tools necessary to set off the debt and begin the distribution of the mezzanine funds, thereby returning the people of Detroit to abundance and prosperity. The Post.net Banking Network has been established by the Universal Postal Union in conjunction with the U.S. Department of Commerce as a global banking network to facilitate the electronic funds transfers, EFTs, to discharge the debt and make the return of the property in the exchange. All right, you I have to ask you to, to terminate your statement now, sir. Um, ex uh, uh, hey, 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 wait a minute. One, there are one Title 18 protections in place for me. I, I would, I may, would... may I have your attention, sir? It, it appears to me that what you are... Uh, saying to me is directly from what you filed with the court, uh, and yes. and and I read it. So I, I, I've already seen. So it is what written. You so write. it is done. You're saying, because as the fiduciary trustee, all fiduciary trustees will be held accountable, and if the order is not carried out, there will be war crimes assessed. All right, so I have to ask you to terminate your statement now. Thank I will you. not terminate it. It stands. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Uh, before we close our uh, court session here today, I want to uh, comment uh, to everyone here that this was uh, truly an extraordinary session uh, of, of the court. Uh, it was... Uh, an example of democracy at its very finest. Uh, the arguments and statements that you all took the time to articulate in writing and in court here today were moving, thoughtful, passionate, compelling, uh, and well articulated. There were well stated legal arguments, well stated um, personal concerns, well-stated arguments about our political process. And I'm, I'm going to suggest, therefore, uh, strongly suggest that uh, everyone who has a stake in the outcome of this case, uh, most of whom, unfortunately, were not here today, uh, should take the time to listen to the audio recording of this proceeding, this entire proceeding, as long as that takes.